Geschosse, die vom Geheimnis umgeben waren, sind unterwegs. So zogen sie in der Nacht, so brausen sie jetzt wieder im ersten Licht des Morgens. Rommel believes that attacks with V-1 have several advantages. On June 18th, he writes to his wife, attacks from a great distance have relieved us considerably. That Sunday, in the daily attacks against London, a rocket hits the church in the Wellington Barracks in central London. Over 120 people lose their lives during the service. The Allies must face the new threat, on Monday, June 19th, the Royal Air Force will strike the facilities in Vauten and destroy many rockets that were ready for launch. The Allied Air Force will now extensively target the V-1 facilities. On that day, a powerful storm causes significant damage to the British artificial harbor at Gold and completely destroys the American one at Omaha. The flow of reinforcements will be interrupted for three days. The news is pleasant for Hitler, but during this three-day period, he is preoccupied with the Eastern Front. The Soviets detonate 50,000 explosives on the Germans' main supply lines. At the same time, 140,000 partisans attack German forces west of Vitebsk and south of Polotsk. What happens during this three-day period is the prelude for the major Soviet offensive that begins on the 22nd of the month. With more forces than Hitler had in 1941, the Soviets launch Operation Bagration on the third anniversary of the start of Operation Barbarossa. At midnight on June 20th, the number of Allied troops in Normandy has reached half a million. Field Marshal von Rundstedt still has doubts about whether the invasion in Normandy is the real attack. On June 25th, he drafts his weekly report and refers to the non-existent 1st U.S. Army Group, which, as he believed, was still in Britain ready for an invasion. On June 18th, the Americans reach Barnville at the western tip of the peninsula. And within a week, they are outside Cherbourg. German Commander General von Schlieben appeals to Rommel to allow him to surrender. Schlieben explains, We have 2,000 wounded who cannot be treated. Is it necessary to sacrifice those who remain? Rommel replies, according to the Führer's orders, you must fight to the last. That day, over 100 Luftwaffe fighters take off from their bases in France to support forces in Cherbourg. All are repelled, while the Allies' Navy bombs Schlieben's positions from the sea. Schlieben and his men defending Cherbourg come out of the city with a white flag. On the same day in Germany, the doctor and zoologist Walter Arndt is executed. His crime was commenting after a heavy Allied raid. This is the end of the Third Reich, and the guilty can now be punished. On June 29th, Hitler will meet again with the two field marshals. He asks Rundstedt to initiate a military court against those who could be considered responsible for the surrender of Cherbourg. The commander of the 7th Army, General Dolman, poisons himself on the same night. 
They try to convince him to see what is really happening. The Fuhrer was cold and abrupt with the two field marshals, dismissing their proposals. He then plunged into a long monologue about how he would win the war with the new miracle weapons. Hitler's speech was lost in his fantasies. After two days, Rundstedt was replaced as the commander of Western forces by Field Marshal von Kluge. Montgomery hoped to take Kane on June 6th. When he failed, he launched three attacks to capture the city. The Canadian attack was halted by the 12th SS Panzer Division on June 7th and 8th. The armored assault to the west of Kane on June 13th was repelled by one of the few Tiger tank battalions in Normandy. The major offensive came on June 26th with the codename Epsom. But the British faced the 9th and 10th SS Panzer Divisions. After five days of intense fighting and over 4,000 casualties, Operation Epsom came to a halt. However, the Germans were more concerned about the Eastern Front. Now, all available reserves would go to the East, and the forces in Normandy could no longer count on significant reinforcements. The British inability to capture Caen led to its destruction. On July 7th, the RAF bombed the city with 2,500 tons of bombs. After the air raids, a Canadian and two British divisions approached but couldn't take the city centre, stopping on the outskirts. The British would try again after 11 days. On July 18th, Normandy would witness the heaviest air raid. Allied aircraft dropped over 6 million kilograms of bombs in a relentless carpet bombing over Caen. The German forces still in the city were in a state of shock. Their tanks were overturned amid the rubble, and the defenders tried to organize themselves amidst the ruins that were once Caen. By noon, British tanks were halfway up the road, and everything indicated that this time the British would achieve their goal. However, what happened next once again confirmed the exceptional endurance and improvisational skills of the German army. Hans von Luck, commander of the 21st Panzer Division, arrives on the battlefield directly from his leave in Paris and hastily coordinates the defense. His engineers climb the hill, and German tanks take battle positions. At midnight, they face the 11th Armored Division of the British. As the British battle tanks began to deploy, they came under anti-tank fire from the high ground. The leading tanks were enveloped in flames. The 23rd Hussar Regiment that followed suffered the same fate. A British soldier describes how everywhere wounded and burning men were running and desperately trying to find a place to take cover 
while an unrelenting rain of armor-piercing projectiles hit the battle tanks. Of the large phalanx of armored vehicles that had advanced into the battle that morning, 106 battle tanks were now destroyed in the cornfields. In reality, only the 11th Armored Division had lost 126 tanks. The Guards Armored Division had lost another 60. Churchill and Eisenhower began to lose their patience. Montgomery had a heated argument with Churchill, trying to persuade him that the results of his plans would soon become apparent. At the same time, the Americans were fighting their own battle in the south of the peninsula. Between July 18th and 20, two divisions had lost a total of 5,000 men in the battle for saint Lo. German losses were even worse. The 352nd Division was still in action after the stubborn defense of Omaha Beach. However, after the Battle of saint Lo, it was almost totally annihilated. The German 7th Army counts a total of 116,000 losses. Only 10,000 men had come from the reserves as reinforcements. On the morning of July 25th, the Americans will move west of St. Lo after intense bombardment. General Fritz Beyerlein, commanding the Panzer Lehr, states, After an hour, I had no communication with anyone, not even through radio. By noon, there was nothing but dust and smoke. At least 70% of my troops were out of action. Dead, wounded, insane, or in a state of shock. The next day begins again with carpet bombing. Kluger, the new Western Front commander, reminds Bayerlein that the line along the saint le Perrier road must be held at all costs. But the line had already broken. He had promised to send reinforcements an SS armored battalion with 60 Tiger tanks. Only five arrived. That night, I gathered the remnants of my division. I had a total of 14 tanks. We could do nothing but retreat. Panzer Lehr was once the best and most powerful armored division in the German army. A German officer writes, we faced the most horrific image of the war. The enemy had literally torn apart the armored units with heavy weapons. Vehicles were disintegrated, and next to them, on the ground or even on the trees, lay the members of my dead comrades. However, Hitler remains adamant. The collapsing front must be held and the situation reversed. On July 15th, Rommel writes to Hitler, the troops are fighting heroically, but the unequal struggle is nearing its end. I must implore you to draw the appropriate conclusions without delay. I feel it is my duty as commander of the army group to state it clearly. I gave him his last chance, Rommel told Spidel. If he doesn't take it, we will act. Two days later, in the afternoon of July 17th, while heading to headquarters, his car was hit by Allied aircraft. Rommel was so seriously injured that initially they believed he would not survive. This was a disaster for the conspirators. Speidel swears that Rommel had decided to fulfill his duty and rid of Hitler in the coming days. In July 1944, the last attempt was made to overthrow Hitler and the Nazi regime. However, the bombing attack on July 20th failed, and Hitler survived once again. It was one of at least 42 attempts against him.